हाय गाइस वेलकम बैक वेलकम बैक आफ्टर द ब्रेक ब्रेक आफ्टर द ब्रेक नॉट ब्रेक आफ्टर द ब्रेक एंड नाउ आफ्टर द ब्रेक वी आर गोइंग टू कवर एन अमेजिंग टॉपिक कॉल्ड ऑडिट रिस्क ऑडिट रिस्क इज द टॉपिक वी आर गोइंग टू कवर आफ्टर द ब्रेक सो व्हाट इज एक्चुअली ऑडिट रिस्क व्हाट डू यू फील कैन बी द रिस्क दैट एन ऑडिटर फेसेस व्हाट डज द ऑडिटर हैज टू डू व्हाट दैट वी डिस्कस जस्ट बिफोर द ब्रेक वेयर डिड वी स्टार्ट दिस चैप्टर विद अ सिंपल थिंग ऑडिटर ऑब्टेनिंग व्हाट व्हाट डज द ऑडिटर वांट अ रीजनेबल अश्योरेंस that the financial statement as a whole now you should be in such a zone that you are speaking with me reasonable assurance that the financial statement as a whole are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud or due to error and when he obtains that reasonable assurance he is able to form an opinion that the financial statements have been prepared in all material respects as per the applicable frf what is frf financial reporting framework once the opinion is formed he issues an opinion he issues a report so where does the risk lies the risk lies in forming a wrong opinion as simple as it can get when the auditor forms a wrong opinion that means he gives what do you think could be a risk so the risk is that he gives a clean report he gives an unqualified opinion when the financial statements had material misstatements when the financial statements had material misstatements till he gave he went on giving a clean unqualified report and that risk of giving the wrong opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated that risk is called audit risk but how do we get to audit risk there are certain components that we need to discuss inherent risk control risk overall risk of material misstatement detection risk what's all that let's try to understand and get that feel i want your attention for the next 10 minutes 10 minutes just watch this screen just listen to me whatever i am drawing just try to understand that if you get that understanding your next 30 classes your next 30 35 classes will be super smooth because these are the words that we'll be using again and again these are the concepts that will be getting repeated again and again once you develop a good pace again everything will be buttery smooth for you let's understand the first concept that we are going to discuss right now the first concept is related to inherent risk so this is the first thing that we need to understand inherent risk inherent risk is the risk that shall be there we can't do anything about it it's the nature of the business it's the nature of the business operations that this risk shall be there risk that the material misstatements will be there in the financial statements related to a particular assertion about assertions about abcd so what is abcd account balance class of transactions or disclosures basically you can say that when the financial statements were prepared there were around 100 uh, items that were stated in the financial statement so let's say there were total 100 items out of those 100 items if i say how many material misstatements were there there were around 40 material misstatements what is this percentage 40 upon 100 it is around 40% that means if the management doesn't put any internal control what is the expected percentage that the financial statement will have a material misstatement it is 40% no internal controls nothing this is the risk which is inherent in the business that the financial statement will have a material misstatement it is 40% now to reduce this risk that the financial statements are prepared correctly let's say management has put an internal control let's say management has actually done something for it management has actually set up a reviewer that a reviewer should sit should review the financial statements before it goes to the auditor and sees if the financial statements have any material misstatement or not so the work of that reviewer is to check the financial statement before they are actually handed over to the auditor let's talk about the reviewer reviewer putting a reviewer is like putting a control are you getting that feeling when the management has actually asked someone to check the financial statement do you think management is trying to place some internal controls here the answer is yes let's say that reviewer checks the financial statements and out of these 40 items out of these 40 items of material misstatements let's say he is able to detect 
he is able to detect 75% of them. 75% he is able to detect. That means he is able to reduce that risk by 75%. That means out of 40 items, let's say 30 items, he is able to detect and correct. He is able to detect and correct that misstatement in a timely manner. Now, what is the risk of that reviewer not detecting the misstatement? It is 25%. So can I say this control that the management had put in, the management had put in to detect the material misstatement will not be able to detect the material misstatement is only 25%. 75% it is working fine. It is able to detect 30 misstatements, but 25% it is not able to do that. What is the 25% of 40 items? It is only 10 items. It is only 10 items. So, if I ask you when the financial statements are reaching the auditor, what is the risk that the financial statements contain a material misstatement? Can I say it is only 10 out of 100 items that were there initially? Initially, we started with 100. Now, only 10 are left. Can I say that the risk that the financial statements are materially misstated before they are handed to the auditor? It is only only and only 10%. Can I say this? Can I say this? Please answer in the chat box. Yes or no. And if you are watching at the home, just utter these words. Can I say that the financial statements that are handed to the auditor, what is the risk that they contain a material misstatement? It is only 10%. Can I say this? Just answer yes or no. Can I say this? If you say yes, then only I will move ahead. <laughs> Let me tell you. Yes, sir. Yes, great. I can definitely say this. And this risk, this risk that the financial statements are materially misstated before being checked by the auditor, this is called the risk of material misstatement. This is what I call the risk of material misstatement. That means the inherent risk which was 40%, out of that 40%, 75% is gone. 75% is mitigated through the internal controls. But what the internal controls have not been able to evade is 25%. So the inherent risk into control risk that is 40%, that was the risk that was inherent. Out of that 40%, what is the risk that still remains? So the risk that still remains is only 25%. So when we calculate 25% of 40%, what do we come out with? We come out with 10%. So this is the equation of risk of material misstatement mathematically. That mathematically risk of material misstatement is nothing but inherent risk multiplied by control risk giving us the risk that the financial statements are materially misstated before being checked by the auditor. Is the concept of risk of material misstatement clear to everyone? Yes or no? It's very simple. Inherent risk, risk is there. Out of that risk, if the controls are not able to do something, what the controls are not able to do? 25%. 25% is the failure rate of controls. So out of the 40%, 25% is the failure rate. So out of that 45%, 25% is not prevented or detected or corrected by the internal control. So that comes out to be only 10% and that is the risk of material mistake. Super clear, super clear. Yes. Great. Now, what do you think is the work of auditor is to perform the audit procedures to check whether the financial statements are materially misstated or not. As per the standard zone auditing, you will perform the audit procedures. But the risk that the auditor has, it is called detection risk. Again, detection risk. Detection risk, what do we mean by detection risk? Now the auditor's work starts. Before detection risk, let me just ask you one more thing. What do you think risk of material misstatement is dependent on at this moment? Can I say the effectiveness of controls will determine the risk of material misstatement? For instance, for instance, if the internal controls had been more effective, the control risk would have been lesser. If the control risk would have been lesser, it would have not been 25%, it would have been something lesser. Do you think the product would have been lesser? 
if the controls would have been much more effective the control risk would have been lesser this to will remain inherent risk to will remain inherent risk is something which is inherited inherent as the name suggest without any consideration of internal control but what is the game changer in this equation sir the game changer is the control risk if the internal controls are effective the control risk will reduce as the control risk reduces the product reduces what is the product the product is risk of material misstatement so can i say if the internal controls are effective they are super good the control risk will be less if the control risk will be less the risk of material misstatement will be less the answer is yes and let me know if the controls are effective do you think i would have to perform more audit procedures or less audit procedures if the internal controls are effective i have to perform more audit procedures or less audit procedures it's very simple i have to perform less audit procedures because now i have got a comfort that internal controls are effective they will be able to prevent detect or correct pdc prevent detect or correct the misstatements in a timely manner that is what the work of internal control is if the internal controls are fulfilling their objective as an auditor it makes my life very very comfortable less audit procedures right everyone is right who is writing less audit procedure so now you got the point inherent risk and control risk combined gives us the risk of material misstatement if the controls are effective risk of material misstatement is low accordingly my nature timing and extent of audit procedure also gets reduced got the point sir now let's talk about detection risk now let's talk about the detection risk what is the detection risk detection risk is basically the risk that as an auditor when i am performing the audit procedures i will not be able to detect the material misstatements which are present in the financial statements even though even though i have performed whole audit as per standards on auditing even though i have done everything as per standards on auditing still some material misstatement remains either it could be individual or collectively but material misstatement has remained in the financial statement it has not been detected by me ultimately if it has not been detected by me it will lead to audit risk so that is the point that you need to understand let's say out of the 10% out of the 10 uh, material misstatements i am only able to i am only able to detect 80 misstatements 80 misstatements are detected what is not detected here is 20 so what is the audit risk please let me know what is the just just give me a second now i have been able to detect eight eight misstatements have been able to detect right sir but what i have not been able to detect is two misstatements so what is the audit risk here so the audit risk is 2 out of 10 i have not been able to detect because 2 out of 10 comes out to 20% this is our detection risk this is our detection risk right sir this is our detection risk now what is the overall audit risk what is the overall audit risk can i say as an auditor as an auditor only 2 out of initial 100 misstatements were left and this comes out to be 2% can i say this can i say this out of the 100 initial material misstatements only 2 are left which were undetected which went unnoticed and this is the audit risk of 2% so what is the audit risk it is nothing but your risk of material misstatement into detection risk that means that means that means what so that means the risk of material misstatement was 10% yes the risk of material misstatement was 10% out of that 10% i was not able to detect 20% of the items that comes out to be 2% of the total population that comes out to be 2% of the total population so risk of material misstatement into detection risk gives us the audit risk which is only 2% in this case did you get this point or not this is all mathematical this is all mathematical conceptually i will just tell you one thing if the internal it all depends on the internal control internal controls are effective yes sir internal controls are effective that means the risk of material misstatement is low if the risk of material misstatement is low what will i do i will perform less nature timing and extent of audit procedures will reduce automatically my if i have to keep my audit risk to an acceptably low level then also if i if the detection risk is even little higher then also it will not affect my 
auditor's judgment. Great, sir. Got this point. Yes. Great. This is all about auditors. Now, let's read some theory part. If you all got all these concepts, definitely it will be very easy for you. Fundamentally, what is auditors expressing a wrong opinion? Wrong opinion means there was a material misstatement. Still, I expressed an unqualified or clean opinion. So, risk that an auditor expresses an inappropriate audit opinion when the financial statements are materially misstated. Audit risk is a function of risk of material misstatement and detection risk. Now, we both understand risk of material misstatement. We also understand the detection risk. What is risk of material misstatement? Risk that the financial statements are materially misstated before they are being submitted to the auditor prior to audit. It has two components. What are the two components? Inherent risk and control risk. These are the two components. Now, let's understand the definition of the two. Inherent risk basically says susceptibility. Susceptibility, you can also say that something is susceptible means that there are chances. Chances that an assertion about a class of transaction, account balance or disclosure will be misstated. There will be a misstatement in the assertion. Before we understand that, let's talk about the meaning of assertion. Let's talk about the meaning of assertion. In simple terms, assertion means the feelings of the management. Sir, what joke you are making right now? Are definitely. These are the feelings of the management. They can be explicitly stated in the financial statement or implicitly stated. Basically, assumptions are the representations made by the management. They can be either explicit, it is stating clearly in the financial statement or they can be implicit. For example, for example, I will give you an example. Let's say management has put payroll expenditure. Let's talk about payroll expenditure. So, there are three things uh, in the financial statement A, B, C and D. What is A, B? It is account balance. That is your balance sheet items. Just look here. Just look here. What do we mean by C? Sir, C means class of transactions that are your PNL items. What are the different class of transactions? Just tell me. Sales, that is your revenue. Purchases, that is your whatever purchases that you are doing. Then comes your finance calls, then comes your payroll expenditure, then comes your depreciation. All these are different classes of transaction, other expenses, right? Then comes your disclosures. What do we mean by disclosure? In simple terms, your notes to accounts. This is, can I say financial statements is just made of ABCD? Just tell me this. Is financial statement just made of ABCD? The answer is yes. Either account balances are there, either class of transactions are there or either disclosures are there. So, in any of the things, if there is a misstatement, then material misstatement, that means there is some problem. Now, material misstatement by saying it, it says that there is a material misstatement in the assertion. Now, what do we mean by assertion? So, there are different assertions about all these three. If I talk about account balance, there are different set of assertions. If I talk about class of transaction, there are different set of assertions. Similarly, for disclosure, let's talk about the class of transactions. What are the different assertions? To remember it, we can use a short mnemonic OCACC. Repeat after me OCACC. By O, I mean occurrence. By C, I mean completeness. By A, I mean accuracy. By another C, I mean classification. And another C means cutoff. Now, these are some things which management doesn't specifically tell you in the financial statement. Have you ever read a financial statement where management has put the payroll expenditure and in bracket it has written, this payroll expenditure was occurred during the year? Never. It is implicit. It is implied that this was related to this year. It has occurred during the year. That's why it is coming in this year's PNL. Similarly, does management say that we have accounted for the expenditure of all our employees? It's obvious. <laughs> Why would management say that? Right. Accuracy. We have accurately calculated the payroll expenditure of this year. Will management ever say it? No. Implied. Similarly, classification. In payroll expenditure, we have only accounted for the employee benefit expenses. Obvious. And last but not the least, cutoff. Cutoff means 
till 31st of March, whatever was the payroll expenditure, we have accounted for it. What was related to the April month, which has been accounted in the next year, we have made a cutoff for 31st March, again implied. So what do we mean by assertions? Assertions are the representations made by the management. They can be explicit, they can be implicit related to the items of financial statement. So these are the assertions. Not necessary management will tell you explicitly ki, this is what I mean to say. This is what we need to understand by what management is conveying to us in the financial statement. When management says payroll expenditure of 500 crores. That means 500 crore expenditure occurred during the year. Apart from 500 crore, no expenditure has occurred during the year. 500 crore has been calculated accurately. It is till 31st of March. It has been classified in payroll because it is related to payroll. No one will tell you explicitly. But these are the feelings of management that you have to understand as the user of financial statement. So, if there is any mistake in any of these things, maybe out of 500 crore, let's say, 100 crore is bogus expenditure. Bogus means it has not even occurred. It is related to the fake employees, ghost employees. Then it is a misstatement. Material or not, that is our judgment. But what you need to hear understand, is what is a misstatement? Misstatement in this case will be assertion is not being complied fully. Management is trying to cheat us. If management is trying to cheat us with any of these assertions, then we call it as a misstatement and this is what this inherent risk is trying to say susceptibility susceptibility of an assertion assertion can be related to anything a b c d account balance class of transaction or disclosure to a misstatement that could be material either individually or when clubbed with other misstatements before before we are considering any related control because inherent risk, as the name suggests, it is inherent. We are not considering any control. Right, sir. Is the inherent risk part clear? Inherent risk is the risk susceptibility of an assertion. Assertion is related to what? Any of the items of financial statement that is A, B, C, D. What is A, B, C, D? Account balance, class of transaction or disclosure that it could be material, it could be misstated and material individually or when aggregated with others without considering the internal control. Is the inherent risk clear? Yes or no? Quickly tell me. Varun says, yes sir, clear. Great. Now let's talk about the control risk. Now what is the work of control? Misstatement is there. It has to just prevent. Either it will prevent. If it is not able to prevent, at least detect before it reaches the auditor. And once it detects, will it leave it as it is? No, it will correct it. It will not leave it as it is, it will correct it. So the work of internal control is to prevent, detect or correct. PDC, say it again with me. What is the work of internal control? The work of internal control is to prevent, detect, correct. PDC of a material misstatement in a timely manner. Timely manner means before it reaches the auditor, it should be prevented, detected and corrected. So what is the risk? that the internal control will not be able to prevent, detect or correct the misstatements in a timely manner. As simple as it can get. So the risk that the misstatements could be uh, related to assertion, again the same line, assertion is related to A, B, C, D, individually or in aggregate will be material, will not be, the risk is that material misstatement will not be prevented, detected and corrected on a timely basis by the internal control. This is the basic thing that you need to understand. The whole line remains same. Okay, once you have learnt it, you can use it anywhere. Assertion related to A, B, C, D, material individually or when aggregated. The basis is, the essence is it that the material misstatement will not be prevented, detected or corrected in a timely manner. I hope you got the point. Yes sir, we got the point. So the risk of material misstatement is basically a combination of two, inherent risk and control risk. When we combine the both, we get the risk of material misstatement and it exists at two levels. Level 1, level 2, no. Financial statement level, which we, just give me a second. Huh? Financial statement level, which we just understood few minutes back as pervasively related to the financial statement as a whole. Pervasively related to the financial statement as a whole, yani impacting the whole financial statements. So, risk of material misstatement can be at the overall financial statement level. That is potentially affecting many assertions, affecting the financial statement as a whole. Or, it could be material but not pervasive. That means, 
only affecting a single assertion. Assertion level for a and assertion level exists at what level? Jaldi se batao. Quickly tell me. Assertion levels are, are for A, B, C, D. If you are not speaking, you are not getting what I am trying to convey. Man, speak it with me. Assertion level for A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D means account balance, class of transaction and disclosure. So there are two levels where the risk of material statement exists at the financial statement level affecting the financial statement as a whole or assertion level related to any account balance. It could be debtors, it could be bank, it could be trade receivable, trade receivable and debtors, one of the same thing, trade payables, anything, inventory or it can be related to your PNL items like class of transaction that we just discussed a few, few, few minutes back and disclosures that say notes to accounts, just affecting single items, nothing else. So these are the risk of material misstatement. And it says, on that basis of risk of material misstatement, we determine the nature, timing and extent of audit procedures. Simple point, if the internal controls are effective, my subsequent testing will reduce. So on the basis of risk of material misstatement, I determine the nature, timing and extent of further audit procedures which are used to obtain audit evidence. This evidence enables the auditor to express an opinion to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level. Now my simple question to you. Can audit risk be reduced to zero? Just answer yes or no. If not, what do you think is the concept that lies behind your answer? If you say that audit risk can't be reduced to zero, let's say that that's your answer. Why it can't be reduced to zero? I want a proper conceptual answer from your end. If you are watching it at home, you are not attending it live, write it on a piece of paper, whatever notebook you are using at this point of time. Those who are attending it live, I want the answer in the chat box why it can't be reduced to zero if it can't be reduced to zero or whether it can be reduced to zero if the answer is yes the answer is vishnu priya has written no sir it can't be reduced to zero because of the inherent limitations of auditing sanya has also correctly said so due to the inherent limitations of auditing it can't be reduced to zero very very happy with the answers that i'm getting pavan has also said rachel is also right vishti is also right great great so i understand so the, 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 the essence of the answer remains the same. Why we are obtaining reasonable assurance, not absolute level of assurance due to inherent limitation. Why audit risk can't be reduced to zero due to inherent limitations. So why are we not able to give absolute assurance, inherent limitations, why we are not able to reduce audit risk to zero, inherent limitations. The answer remains the same. Good. What is the detection risk? Simple question. The risk that even though I perform the audit procedures as per standard on auditing, I will not be able to detect a material misstatement individually or collectively whatever it can be the risk that the procedures performed by the auditor to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level will not detect a misstatement that exists and that could be material individually or an aggregated with other misstatements that is the risk of not detecting a material misstatement is the audit risk wala part clear is the audit risk part clear because before we actually covered this part, you must be thinking, what are these terms? Risk of material misstatement, audit risk, inherent risk, control risk. Now, I hope you have got the essence of each type of risk. Audit risk is basically the risk of expressing a wrong opinion. Inherent risk, it is there, susceptibility, without any consideration of internal control. Control risk, controls are not able to prevent, detect or correct the misstatements in a timely manner. Combining both, we get the risk of material misstatement. Two levels, financial statement level, assertion level. And then we talk about detection risk, risk of not detecting a misstatement, even though we are performing audit procedures as per standards, trying to reduce the audit risk to an acceptably low level, still we leave a material misstatement undetected. Combining the both, we get the audit risk. Got the point. Great. Now let's talk about the scope of audit, a very childish topic. Just read it, understand it and ignore it. What this says? It just says what the work of auditor is just to read the financial statements, perform the audit procedures, collect the audit evidence, on the basis of audit evidence, draw the conclusions and on the basis of that conclusion form an opinion, nothing else. Does that opinion also mean that I got to say that this entity will continue for years and years and years? Or I am just saying that the financial statements are all right. Is audit opinion a recommendation or an opinion regarding the future viability of the entity that the entity will be able to continue for years and years and years? 
the answer is no i am just checking the financial statements that whether they have been prepared as per financial reporting framework or not where does the future viability concept enters here so it is out of the scope of audit second thing does audit means that i am also checking the effectiveness and efficiency with the management has carried out its operation ever heard that the auditor saying that the management could complete its target never we are just checking the transaction we are just checking the account balances nothing else we are never going to give our opinion on the effectiveness and efficiency of operations just remember it it is out of the scope of financial audit financial audit means the audit of financial statements right sir another thing can we be asked to report on the internal controls of the entity the answer is yes you must have also done it in your article ship that is called icfr reporting that is the internal control over financial reporting where you report on the effectiveness of internal control yes we do icfr reporting because it is required by the companies act in case of certain companies similarly can we be asked to report on certain additional matters yes caro 2020 says that there are certain additional matters where we have to report this is all that is stated in your scope of audit wala part auditor's opinion on the financial statements deals whether the financial statements have been prepared in all material respects as per applicable frf already covered in the initial paragraph such an opinion is common to all the audit of financial statement whatever financial statement you audit opinion remains same the auditor's opinion does not give any surety that the entity will continue in the future future viability neither it talks about the effectiveness and efficiency of the entity however in some cases we may be required to provide our opinion on certain matters example the effectiveness of internal control as i discussed with you icfr reporting works on it similarly consistency of a separate management report with the financial statement caro 2020 has things regarding this last point is while the essays include requirements and guidance in relation to such matters to the extent they are relevant to forming an opinion on financial statement it says that essays will tell you the audit procedures to perform but in certain circumstances you may feel that you need to perform some additional audit procedures you can go ahead with that it is not stopping you it you it is not outside your scope if you feel that for achieving the overall objective of drawing a reasonable assurance of drawing your opinion you want to perform additional procedures you are free to do that there is no problem in that is the scope part clear i don't think there was much here you just need to read it understand it i don't think institute is testing such kind of things in the uh, exam just read it i am sure you would have got it just read it if you want once and we'll move ahead you can just go through it once if you want then comes the very important topic that we'll discuss after this but before it just get comfortable with this very 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 ultra easy portion of today's class nothing nothing spicy here oh my god yeah all calls coming here hmm. Yes, sir. Got it. Done. Now, just, just, just give me your next eight minutes. Sir, what will happen in eight minutes? We will complete this topic. And with this topic, I can assure you, our class gets also completed because after this, we are already left with a very small topic, which is very easy to complete it. So now we are nearing, you can say the end of today's class. So this topic is a very very important topic sir why you are saying it's an important topic because not only we are discussing here it is an essay 200 but the same thing same to same will be there in your essay 210 agreeing the terms of audit engagement so if you learn it here you don't have to learn it again you can just repeat whatever you have learned here right now so this is the bonus topic that we are doing let's understand what this topic got to say just look at me very easy so the topic name is premise the premise or you can say the premise and in the bracket it says responsibilities of the management without even going through the topic i think we can discuss and make it out what the topic would be all about we are subject studying a subject called auditing right sir what is audit all about expressing an opinion on the financial statements where does the financial statements come from management so the basic primary responsibility of the management is to prepare the financial statements. How should be the financial statements prepared? We all know it right now as per applicable FRF. That is your financial reporting framework. That is going to be your schedule three, AS, India's, anything like that. So 
बेसिक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी प्रिपरेशन ऑफ फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एज पर एप्लीकेबल एफ आर एफ एंड दट फाइनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट शुड बी फ्री फ्रॉम राइट नाउ इन द चैट बॉक्स राइट नाउ इन द चैट बॉक्स फट आफ फट like crazy right in the chat box that financial statement should be free from what what they should be free from right tell me tell me what this financial statement should be free from quickly tell me let's see who gets it right crazy crazy sanya sarumathi prabhu very very good financial statements free from material misstatement simple the financial statement should be free from what so the financial statement should be free from material misstatement how to ensure that the financial statements are free from material misstatement for that we put in internal controls to prevent detect and correct the misstatements in a timely manner we just discussed in the control risk wala part inherent risk is there so just to mitigate that inherent risk just to reduce the risk of material misstatement what does the management do it puts in internal control so the two basic responsibility preparation of financial statement as per applicable frf free from material misstatement to make it free from material misstatement it has to put in internal controls so this is the first part that you need to know we are done with it let's read through it you will love it sir first part is for the ppfs ppfs means preparation and presentation of financial statement in accordance with applicable frf inko kya karna hai this includes design implementation and maintenance of internal control relevant to the preparation and presentation of financial statements that are free from material misstatement whether due to fraud and error so first responsibility is preparation and presentation of financial statement as per applicable frf for this it will include dim dim means design implementation and maintenance first they will design the internal control after that they will implement it once implemented they will take care of it how do you take care of it by maintaining the internal control so this includes design implementation and maintenance of internal control which is relevant to ppfs that is preparation and presentation of financial statements free from material misstatement how can the material misstatement come intentionally or unintentionally intentional is fraud or unintentional is error whether due to fraud or due to error this is your first responsibility of management and tcwg why the topic has been named premise can you tell me why the prod topic has been named premise because this forms the base of audit until and unless management prepares the financial statement what will i audit as an auditor so this is the premise na this is the basis on which the whole audit is going on so management at tcwg have to accept their responsibility of preparation and presentation of financial statement how do you remember it's a ppfs preparation and presentation of financial statements as per applicable frf which includes dim of internal control dim means design implementation and maintenance of internal control again how do you remember it simple chronology first you design an internal control then you implement it then you maintain it design implementation and maintenance dim of internal control so that the financial statements are free from material misstatement whether it can be due to fraud or it can be due to error second thing financial statements are prepared then what will i do i will do my audit procedures as i will do my audit procedures i will need a lot of things from the management sir what you will need i will need ow sir what is ow sir ow is a a u speak it again you have you also have to do it okay i am listening to you what do i need from the management to do my audit i need ow sir ow means all information that i need from the management to perform my audit necessary for to perform audit procedures then it may be sometimes that i also need some additional information that i may ask for i i need to get that and the third thing that i need is unrestricted access unrestricted access to all those within the entity from whom i as an auditor determine to obtain audit evidence that i need audit evidence from this and this person i want access to this person simple these are the two main responsibility of the management first preparation and presentation of financial statements as per applicable frf dim of internal control so that the financial statements are free from material misstatement and then to provide the auditor with ow sir ow ka kya matlab hai all information additional information and unrestricted access to everyone within the entity to whom the auditor considers it is necessary to obtain audit evidence just go through these two points fast learn it and let me know that you are done with it then we'll continue because after this some basic information is done this we'll read and quickly move forward 
Just when you are done with it, let me know. And go through it. done great 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 others also tell me done sir great sir very good sir chalo sir Let's move ahead, sir. Great. Now let's talk about some residual points of the responsibility. So it says as a part of their responsibility for preparation and presentation of financial statement. Now, by now, I think you would be comfortable by this short form of PPFS. So uh, fulfilling the responsibility of preparation and presentation of financial statement, management and TCWG are responsible for few things. First of all, they will identify the applicable FRF. What is the FRF that is applicable for them? Whether they have to be an India's compliant entity, AS compliant entity, they have to just check. And then jab, they, when they have identified the FRF, now on that basis of FRF, they will prepare and present the financial statements as per that FRF. Once they have prepared the financial statement as per their FRF, they will give a description of that framework in the financial statement. Now, learn the two adjectives in this class right now. We are learning two adjectives. First one is accounting estimates. How should be the accounting estimates? The accounting estimates should be reasonable. Remember it. Whenever you are talking about accounting estimates, now you are not a student of CA intermediate who will just speak the word accounting estimate. You will always say reasonable accounting estimate. Talking about the accounting policies, you will say appropriate accounting policies. That is AAP. You must have heard about this amazing political party up, right, sir? So, account accounting policies will be up, yani appropriate accounting policies. Just to make you learn, thi? nothing else from this mnemonic you have to take away. How should be the accounting estimate? Reasonable accounting estimate. How should be the accounting policy? Appropriate accounting policy. That's it. So here it just says that when the management is preparing the financial statement, whenever it is making the judgment, accounting estimate should be reasonable. Appropriate accounting policy should be applied consistently by the management. This is all it on to say. And the judgments, whatever it makes, should be in the context of applicable FRF. Nothing else. Next point. Two types of financial statements are there. Common financial statements that we see in our daily routine, what the big companies prepare for their shareholders to meet the common financial information needs of a wide range of users. This is what our course covers. This is something that we will study in this course. The other part which is out of the course is special purpose financial statement to fulfill the specific user needs. Just understand that these, there are two types of financial statements. No need, to, no need to go into depth. What are these special purpose financial statements? Just accept this fact that yes, there are a certain types of financial statement for specific need, need of the users, specific financial statement. And then there are general purpose financial statement for the general user needs that we encounter in our daily lives during our articleship. These are the common financial information needs and for the wide range of users, Jinko, we call general purpose financial statement. I don't think there was any technical thing in the, this part. You just need to read it and move ahead. Nothing else. All you need to do is read. But here what we did was learnt it. This is something that you need to learn. Right, sir. We got this point. Is this point clear? Just let me know yes or no. Then we'll move to the last stage of this chapter and we'll be done with today's class. Is this point the premise responsibility of management and TCWG clear to all of you? Yes or no? Clear, sir. Great, sir. Now, 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 last part of the topic, last part of today. I am sure you must be very excited. There is a inner push of happiness and excitement when we get to hear, 
लास्ट टॉपिक ऑफ द डे ये हैप्पी वेरी वेरी हैप्पी सर व्हाट इज टीसीडब्ल्यू जी टीसीडब्ल्यू जी इज दोस चार्ज विद गवर्नेंस दैट वी स्टडीड इनिशियली सेटिंग द ओवरसाइट ऑफ द स्ट्रेटेजिक डायरेक्शन ऑफ द एंटिटी वेयर द एंटिटी विल मूव द मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर्स द मैनेजर्स और यू कैन से द एग्जीक्यूटिव कमिटी मेंबर्स चेयरमैन दीज आर द टीसीडब्ल्यू जी एज आई टोल्ड यू वेन एवर मैनेजमेंट विल नॉट लिसन टू यू यू विल रीच रीच आउट टू देम की management is not considering what i want management is not listening to me so whatever complaints you have regarding the management you reach out to tcwg this is the role of tcwg in whole audit process just accept this now conduct of audit in accordance with sas very generic topic ultra generic topic what it says whatever audit you do comply with the requirements of sas don't say that you have complied with sas unless you have complied with all the requirements of sas there can be sometimes then sa is related to a particular situation and that situation is not applicable to audit then you need not apply to the sa example sa 610 610 is an sa which talks about using the work of internal auditor now the company that i am auditing it does not have any internal auditor how will i use the work of internal auditor so that sa is not applicable similarly sa says that you have to perform certain audit procedures but it is not possible in that circumstance for example covid in covid it was not possible for me to do an inventory count at a place where there was lockdown so what alternate audit procedures i could do i could check the subsequent sale of the inventory i could check the uh, prior purchases of the inventory or what i could do i could check the inventory via video call so these are some things which are not stated in the essays but these are some things which are called alternate audit procedures so sometimes it may not be possible for me to do what is written in the essay at that point of time it is not an excuse it is not an excuse for me that i will not do any audit procedures i have to perform alternate audit procedures to obtain audit evidence this is all that is written in this topic just read it and understand it complying with the essays relevant to audit whatever essays that are relevant to audit i will comply with them when an essay is relevant to the audit when the circumstances or the conditions stated in the essay are addressed by the essay exist in my case when we are applying the essay should we have an understanding of it yes this most basic thing that can be written here is this only i will not represent compliance with essay unless i have complied with all the requirements of the essays simple what the objectives that are stated in the essays i have to achieve them it will help me in achieving the overall objective that is to express an opinion on the financial statement sometimes it may be required by me to perform additional procedures than the one that is required by the essays and i have to evaluate whether the audit evidence that i have obtained is sufficient and appropriate last point is complying with the relevant requirements whatever be the relevant requirements i will comply with the essay unless that essay is not relevant example essay 610 that i just told you sometimes there can be conditional requirement but the condition doesn't exist now it says in certain exceptional circumstances it may be required by me for depart from the relevant requirement for requirement in essay in such cases i will perform alternate audit procedures as i told you in case of inventory count inventory count during covid was performed during alternate audit procedures failure to achieve an objective if i am not able to achieve an objective which prevents me from achieving the overall objective again i will modify my opinion or withdraw from the engagement basic stuff and last thing if i find anything significant i will document it as per sa 230 nothing spicy here just read through these points you just need to have an understanding ki if you find something significant basic point is documented one topic which i think we felt i felt that it was not covered is this last topic basic topic what to, what is sufficiency sufficiency is the quantity whenever audit evidence i will obtain i will make sure it is sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that means a complete audit evidence complete in all respects not only in the quantity but also in the quality sufficiency it's a measure of quantity appropriateness is a measure of quality how do you determine whether quality is perfect if the audit evidence is relevant to you for example if i'm checking the bank uh, bank balance the bank balance confirmation is relevant audit evidence for me if i am checking the capitalization of a building the building which is under construction what do you think would be a relevant audit evidence for me so relevant evidence audit, audit evidence would be for you in case of that would be a valuation report by an expert if an expert is providing me the valuation report it is providing me a report which talks about the stage of completion of that building then that report can be a relevant audit evidence for me similarly not only the audit evidence should be relevant 
but it should also be reliable rel rel not only relevant but also reliable reliable that means i can rely on it what do you think it is more reliable the audit evidence i am obtaining from the management or the audit evidence i am obtaining from external sources obviously the external sources will be more reliable than the management because the one which has been prepared by the management could have been manipulated by the management but the one which i am obtaining from external sources will be more reliable so relevance and reliable together defines the quality of audit evidence and by quality i mean the appropriateness of audit evidence so how should be the audit evidence again two adjectives sufficient and appropriate audit evidence we call it s a a e sai so what do you mean by sai sufficient and appropriate audit evidence so to obtain reasonable assurance i need to get sufficient and appropriate audit evidence with that audit evidence i will form the conclusion on the basis of conclusion i will draw my audit opinion reasonable assurance as i told you in the beginning it's a high but not absolute level of assurance do this thing with me do this thing with me the question bank that you will get in that there are only two questions and one of the questions is related to the reasonable assurance so do it with me right now reasonable assurance is what sir it's a high but not absolute level of assurance do this dance step with me it's a high but it's not an absolute level of assurance again audit evidence is basically the information which is used by the auditor in arriving the conclusion sufficiency i have told you it's about the quantity of audit evidence what does the quantity depend on higher the risk higher the quantity right sir so quantity is affected by the risk of material misstatement also by the quality of that audit evidence quality means the relevance and reliability of audit evidence and appropriateness is also the quality of audit evidence and quality depends on relevance and reliability is the sufficiency and appropriateness part clear just read through these points take minute take two minutes imbibe these points in your head and let me know how you feel after that just go through these points sufficiency and appropriateness we are running on time nothing to worry we are going to one time just the last part that has to be done now you are good to go take your time take your time sane you will get the books within this week aapko aapki books mil jayenge you will get the books most probably by weekend but uh, again i am not sure how much time does it take to reach your location the books have been dispatched today so most probably you should get them within the next 3 4 days but the pdf has been uploaded in your google drive so it should not be a challenge for you great varun great vishnu priya anyone else we need to wait for please let us know take your time complete it done sir great sir so guys today we just completed one essay essay 200 but let me tell you everyone who has paid adequate attention in the class you have developed a very 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 strong base for audit this is the base that will make your all other classes the whole experience of this audit journey very very comfortable so first of all thank yourself for being attentive in this class for studying everything so diligently now just to make sure that whatever we have discussed in the past 2 to 2 and a half hours it does not go into waste all you need to do is the is after completing this class today only try to spend around 1 or 1 and a half hours so what this 1 and 1 and a half hours we need to spend in revising what we learned in this class 
you just need to revise and by revising i don't mean to say that you just need to read the points but you all not only have to read but you also have to learn them and recall them and spend that time today learning these points it will not take you much time because we have discussed a lot of things in detail we have discussed some memory techniques also to which can help you in remembering these points so ultimately it will be very comfortable for you if you devote one hour one hour 15 minutes within our 30 minutes in revising of everything that we have discussed also do one thing there are only two questions only two questions are there for this essay essay 200 do complete them for the live class ones, I will share the question bank with you in the uh, WhatsApp group. Just go through these two questions. Very, very easy questions. You will love them. And for others, you have the question bank. Just solve these two questions. You have any doubt, reach out to me. Would be very happy to help you out. So guys, that's all for today. Wishing you the best for your audit journey with me. I hope it's a fun learning experience for all of you. As I say, just keep this journey on. Just have a positive attitude every day and this journey will become very 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 comfortable for you god bless you all let's catch up in the next class